All right, let's get into it, everyone. It's the Donovan Live post game show on a Thursday night alongside Jim Donovan. I'm Dave Dientel here on WKYC's Facebook Live. Uh, earlier this afternoon, the news came out. No surprise uh, if we've been following our shows and following the Cavaliers. Uh, a mutual parting of the ways between the team and head coach Larry Drew, who was put in a very tough circumstance replacing Teron Liu and did the best he could, Jimmy. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it seems like both sides felt it was best to go their separate ways. And I think it's, uh, I think it is best. I think uh, under the current circumstances, this is a major rebuild. Mm -hmm. Even if they win the draft lottery, which I, I know a lot of us root for them to do that again, because it will speed up the rebuild. Yes. But nevertheless, it is large in scope. It's a major rebuild. And I think at this point in his life, I don't think Larry Drew and probably a lot of other name coaches mm -hmm. don't want to be a part of a rebuild. And probably, Dino, a lot of name college coaches yes. don't want to be a part of a big major NBA rebuild. So I think what you're going to get is you're going to get rising star yes. assistant coaches. Yes, that you hope ready for the next level. You yeah. hope that that guy is going to be ready. You know, Teron Liu, for example, you know, a uh, high-profile assistant, ended up becoming head coach because of the David Blatt right. situation, but, you know, ended up becoming a championship coach. Um, yeah, so let's get that out right, right away. I mean, you know, the, the first name that's going to be floated out there, I just heard you talking to our guy Jason <laughs> Lloyd about it. We'll hear more from Jason tonight uh, from The Athletic. Um, Tom Izzo, is, his name is going to be floated out there, the Michigan State coach, good friend of Dan Gilbert, who, of course, is Michigan State ties to the Spartan graduate. I, it sounds it sounds sexy, it sounds big, but it just doesn't sound like a fit right now. No, and it's because of the major rebuild, I think. And Tom Izzo is in a wonderful situation. I mean, he has his own kingdom, which I think has settled down mm -hmm. over from where it was at this point last year with all of the, you know, turmoil in East Lansing at Michigan State and the allegations and the truths of what was going on there within that athletic department. But it has settled down, I think, both football and certainly basketball and another final four year and another great coaching job by him. But I think there is always that ceremonial phone call yeah. that Dan Gilbert will make to Tom Izzo just out of the chance yeah. that he catches him at the right time for Dan Gilbert. And he says, yeah, you know what, maybe I will. I think the timing of this is going to be very, very important. And, and Jason Lloyd uh, also ag agreed with this. And that is that it's, I think that the draft lottery and where they are yes. is going to kind of tell the story of where they're going to go in their coaching search and how many people are going to apply for the job that are worth their salt. Because you're, 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 there, are, there are going to be, obviously, the, those – those young, exciting assistants that everybody's going to be looking at in addition to name coaches. But, I mean, you've got a number of teams that are going to be looking for a head coach. I mean, from Sacramento, uh, Memphis, the Cavs. I mean, there are, there are vacancies out there. Yeah. So uh, we always find this in the NFL. And sometimes I think when one team makes their coaching decision, <laughs> sometimes other teams panic and say, oh, man, we've got to get this guy right. before somebody else gets him. And like you said, patience might be the best way to do this and wait and see what happens with the lottery because you want to know where you're going and who you might be drafting in June. So does the coach. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you go back to when David Blatt got the job here in Cleveland. David Blatt basically, uh, you know, even go back, there's, there's two of these probably. Mm -hmm. um, Byron Scott yeah. takes the Cavs job yeah. and tries to go down to the Jar Arena where LeBron James is holding a, a Nike camp, a Nike, I believe, yeah, I at that, that time. The week uh, of the this decision. Is, this is decision one, okay? And he's the new head coach of the Cavaliers. And at least technically at that point in time, he had LeBron James. Yes. And, you know, he was going to wear his Laker championship rings and go down there and go, hey, you know. Hey, I come you on, what, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. And LeBron didn't give him the time of day. And suddenly LeBron leaves and Byron Scott's got a terrible <laughs> basketball team. The job changes yes. incredibly. On the other side of the spectrum, David Griffin goes and he gets, you know, he gets David Blatt yep. to come to this country and coach. And he's got a much different team because he doesn't, at least when he yeah. takes the job, he doesn't have LeBron James. No, you're thinking okay? you're, you're thinking you're going to coach Kyrie Irving, Dion Waiters, uh, Anthony Wiggins, right. or Andrew Wiggins, I'm sorry, not Anthony, Andrew Wiggins, 
uh, what Tyler Zeller and Tristan Thompson. Right, I mean, right. you're you're coaching a bunch of kids. Right, and you know, which might have worked in the Euro League. Yeah, where he, and he was accustomed to that, and then suddenly LeBron comes back, writes the letter, and comes back in, and now David Blatt's got a completely yes. different team that you know he really had a tough time adjusting right. to. I mean, he really had a tough time adjusting to that, even through the playoffs mm-hmm. that first year. You know, when he was calling timeouts, he didn't have timeouts left. And I mean, it was right. a mess. Right. So I think that's the situation that you're in right now. This job is very, what it is right now is a major rebuild. Yeah. If they won the draft lottery, it's it's a major rebuild, but with a heavy accelerator on it, if you end up with a player like Zion Williamson from Duke. So that it's a really tricky job. You also have to... When you take this job, when you when you take the Cavaliers, um, you've got. I mean, I, I think we can agree. I think Kobe Altman. I think you should feel better about him as a general manager now than we did this time a year ago, or certainly after the the Kyrie Irving trade. I think I think Kobe Altman's done a, a pretty good job in have in given what he had to work with. Um, but you got you're dealing with that a, a young general manager and an owner. That, quite frankly, Jimmy, I mean, has no problems, you know, firing coaches and firing general managers um, if, if, if they don't kind of reach the bar fast enough. Dino, do you realize uh, Dan Gilbert is still paying Mike Brown? Yeah. He is still paying Mike Brown. Mike Brown sits on the Golden State bench alongside Steve Kerr and gets a Cavaliers full salary off his head coaching contract with the Cavaliers. The Golden State Warriors are just paying like a little stipend. Right. And, you know, for at least a couple of years, he was paying him to beat him. Right. I mean, so you're right. He doesn't mind. That's the world of ownership. Yeah. You know, it, you know, the Browns have done it more than the Cavs. I mean, they've been paying oh. guys for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Some have been with other teams uh, after being fired as a coach or a head coach with the Browns. It's amazing, really, yeah. what these guys can stomach. Where do you look um, – does it matter where the candidate has has been an assistant? Like, do you want somebody who's been with Greg Popovich or somebody who's been with Doc Rivers? Or do you want somebody that just, you know, you find the diamond in the rough no matter where he is? Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of guys that have actually been in their pipeline, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, have coached Canton, yeah. you know, the Canton Charge, and have been, you know, with them and in their system that they kind of know. Mm-hmm. And those guys would probably, you know, have a have a lead on this thing, mm-hmm. you know, because they know the scenario, they know the people that are here right now, and so you're looking at those kind of people. Um, but yeah, I think that normally, I think right now, you're taking a look at guys that have been sitting to the left of a head coach yeah. and uh, and are ready to to come in and possibly get their shot. I mean, that's that's how it happens. Um, you know, you I don't know if you're going to have this this situation where. You know, for instance, uh, or you have Luke Walton, right? You know, that could you know lose his job in Los Angeles and be available. I think the Cavaliers like him, yeah, um, and thought of him as a real heady guy. Mm-hmm. Thought he did a great job in Golden State when Steve yeah. Kerr was sick and uh, you know really struggling. And mm-hmm. Luke Walton had that amazing run with him before becoming the Laker head coach. But you know, I don't think what you're going to have, for instance, is do you get Mark Jackson? I don't think so. I don't think. I don't. I don't either. Yeah. I don't, or or yeah. Kenny Smith. Yeah. You know, these you know, kind right. of guys. Yeah. I think. I think they're going to probably go with guys that are kind of lifers. Yeah. But they have paid their dues. Our guy Ben Axelrod uh, kind of has laid out some guys to watch in the search. A couple of names just kind of like stopped and, and, and looked at them. That's familiar. Chris Jen, a guy that has both NBA assistant yeah. experience, He's LeBron college, shooting, assi- coach, yeah, was LeBron he? shooting coach. College experience at Ohio State. He played for the Buckeyes. Uh, he's now in Atlanta, and you sit there and you go, "Well, Dino, you know the Atlanta Hawks are terrible." Mm-hmm. But it's a guy that has familiarity of the the challenges, if you will, uh, of coaching the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, I wonder if he might be a, a guy. Jamal Mosley, assistant with the Dallas Mavericks, former assistant here with with the Cavs. There you go. And there's another name I thought that. Uh, uh, Ben put out there that was interesting. How about Kevin Ollie? Now I know I know he he got you know fired from UConn, his alma mater, because of an NCAA violation that he's been trying to get uh, thrown out. Um, 
But I want uh, he'd be an interesting guy, former Cavalier player. Yeah, I mean, um, I think uh, you know there are some guys that I think that really there's a direct line. You hit on some of them. Steve Hetzel is a guy that mm-hmm. I think that uh, you know probably could be a lead candidate. You know, coming in here. I mean, you know, there's a connection here. Um, it's uh, it's a very very interesting job right now. It's not a great job as you and I talk here at this point in time. It's not a good job right now. Uh, it's not a good roster. No. Um, it's it's very very incomplete, but it could become a very good job very very, very quickly. quickly. Yeah, yeah not, you know, you imagine if 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 the Cavs haven't found their guy by the time of the lottery. And the lottery is usually uh, during the Eastern Conference semifinals. Or the I think Western it's in the middle of May. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you're talking about a, approximately a month from now. Uh, the Cavs haven't found the, their guy yet. They've yeah, you know, we've heard maybe a couple of names, but all of a sudden the Cavs get the lucky ping pong ball and, yeah. and everybody's calling right. Toby Altman to try to get an interview. Yeah. How about one more name? And and I'm gonna sound like a homer on this, but but there are some some reasons why you would think that. A former NBA uh, an NBA assistant turned into a college head head coach, had some pretty good success. And went back to the NBA and is part of a team that's had one of the best turnarounds and one of the best records in the Western Conference. Mark Price. Well, I mean, Denver, you know, I'm very, I'm, Denver Nuggets yeah, assistant. I, I have to tell you, I love Mark Price. Mark I, Price is the son of a coach. Yes. You know, Mark's dad was a great coach down in Oklahoma where he grew up. Um, I love Mark Price. I, you know, I don't know enough about him as a coach. As a coach, that's, I, um, that's I would, one thing. I, I would I, bump into him when he was an assistant coach and he was a shooting coach. And boy, I mean, there's a shooting coach because he had, he had one of the most beautiful shots and releases and elevations, and, and he's just a great player. I don't know about him as a coach. I yeah. don't know enough about him as a coach. He did dabble. He was a he college, was college head coach. College head coach, head yeah. coach at, at, at Charlotte, USC yeah. Charlotte, and was there a couple of years and went back to the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I don't think they got – they didn't get to the tournament when he was right. at Charlotte. But yeah. um, I, that name all of a sudden just kind of – I'm like, well, you know, top uh, – he, he's a – I don't know if he's the top assistant out there for, for Quinn Snyder, but I think he's uh, – or, or for the Nuggets. But he's – He's well thought about in Denver, and they've had a really good year. They have year. had a great year. They so. were right there with Golden State all the way through the regular season. You're right. Um, you know, there's that – boy. You, you, you want to – be hard you, to root against right. Mark Price. I was going to say, yeah. you want to get people excited, but but it's that would be a roll of the dice because we don't – you just said, we don't know how he would be as a head coach. It's kind of like – the Sandy Alomar thing, I think, for the Indians. Oh, Sometimes yeah. where you sit yeah. there and you, you think. I mean, I, I would, I would absolutely. If I wanted, to, if I wanted a new manager for my team, you know, if I was out there looking, I would always talk to Sandy Alomar if I were out there looking. Yeah. But you know, until you, until you sit in the dugout, or in this case, until you have the clipboard in your hands, you don't know how it's going to be. But. Um, I, I think he'd be worth an interview. I think he'd be worth a phone call. Well, I have to tell you, he was a he was a driven player um, because a lot of people, when they got him, just said, "Nice shooter, but really small." Can he play in the NBA? And the answer was yes, he can play yeah. in the NBA. He was feisty. He was dogged. Uh, he was just a scorer. Uh, he was a re- he was a real leader. I thought mm-hmm. he was a real leader. Um, I, again, now that is, that's as a player. Right. I don't. But off the court, he was very soft spoken. Right. He was almost shy. Right. He really was. I mean, he was just a real. He was the he was the kid next door. Mm-hmm. He was the guy next door. Um, he, I again, I different, don't know enough from, about the different from you know people say well what about you know it's different from Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr got in a fight once with Michael Jordan in practice, and, and you know when they were with the Bulls together. It's a different. But but you know I, I see what Steve has done with the Warriors in his first really, you know, major coaching run. And right. you sit there and you get, of course, when you have Curry, Durant, Thompson, and, and, and the rest of the team there, um, you know, and Draymond Green, you know, you, you can be successful. But um, I just, it was kind of a name that kind of popped up in my head just a moment ago. I'm like, yeah. I, wonder, I wonder if, you know, Mark Price would be somebody that they would look at, not, not just because of his Cavs roots, but because of his, his coaching experience, both uh, NBA and college. Well, you know, if Rick Pitino doesn't get the St. John's job, and I know he's really going after that, um, after Chris Mullins uh, stepped down, uh, I think he calls everybody that has a job opening. Yeah, right. So I'm sure, you know, 
Rick Pitino's <laughs> on line five. Uh, you know, he's trying to do anything. I mean, he would. Well, I mean, he went over and coached in Europe. He's in Greece, I think, didn't he? And won. Do you remember? I think he beat he, David Blatt's team because yeah. Blatt pulled his team off the floor. <laughs> That's right. In the championship That's right. game. That's yeah. right. Do you remember? Uh, uh, there was always like when LeBron first came back. You know, we always have to qualify with LeBron when he left the first time, when he came back, when he left the second time. There was always this thought of you know that they were going to fire David Blatt, and somehow uh, Dan Gilbert would convince uh, John Calipari yeah, right. to come up yeah. from uh, Lexington yeah. and come come coach. Uh, you know, because, you know, he loves LeBron and, you know, would love to, to coach, you know, would have loved to coach LeBron. But that, that that never happened. I mean, Calipari, he's another one that, you know, he has it really good in Kentucky. <laughs> he just signed a huge right. deal, yeah. So it's it's kind of like, you know, it's it's I think it's going to be the same with Izzo. It's, 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 we all, it's like with Nick Saban. It's like these, a lot of these college coaches, right. the money they get is as much or more uh, in the college ranks than in the professionals, and they feel like they're more of the CEOs of the program, yeah. so they don't have to necessarily answer to a general manager or answer to an owner. You just answer to, you know, the athletic director, the president, and your alumni. Yeah, I was always surprised Billy Donovan made the move that Me he too. made because he just had college coach written all over him, mm -hmm. and he won a couple of times down in Florida, and, and then he, you know, he. Remember, he took the Orlando job for a day or so, yeah. and then gave it up, went back, and then gave it up again, and uh, and he left Florida, and he ended up at Oklahoma City. I guess that's working out okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, but I always was surprised that he really had such a desire to coach in the NBA because he was such a legend mm -hmm. in college. He was Rick Pitino's go-to guy at Providence um, and went to the Final Four with them. And, uh, you know, I, I just always thought he – there's a guy that's got college coach yeah, written, written all, all over, over him, yeah. and he did, and he did a very good job, and he's a two-time winner of a national championship. He went back-to-back, -back. but then he, you know, he really had that NBA taste. Yeah, he came so close to going to Orlando and pulled back, and then finally I think the, the idea where, geez, I can go to Oklahoma City and I can coach Russell Westbrook, and at the time Durant was still there, I think, that first year, right. and I could coach these guys and, mm -hmm. you know, be a, a championship coach of, of a team that's you know right there and and ready to win. It's interesting. If you think about, it, I, I was kind of going in back in my mind. If you think about guys the Cavaliers <laughs> have hired, you know, well, even since Dan Gilbert has been here, it's like, you know, he hi he hired Mike Brown, who had was an unproven head coach. Mm. You got Byron. I mean, now Byron was the almost like the difference in that, you know, Byron had, uh, you know, had legitimate head coaching experience, you know, had taken a team to the NBA finals. Yeah, I he think took the Nets. Yeah. the Nets. Brought Mike Brown back. David Blatt, no experience as, a, as an NBA head coach. Ty, Ty Lue, no experience as a head coach. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that trend is going to continue or if, if he's going to go in and, and try to find somebody um, that's at least done this before. Well, it, again, I think, um, you know, I, I, he may try and do that, Dino, but, I, you know, the guys are smart on the other side, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the Cavs have a little bit of a reputation now that, uh, you know, I mean, Ty Lue had six games at the start of the yes. season this year, and he was two years separated, you know, from winning the championship. Right. And he had gone to the finals, you know, as part of that, you know, a great job that he had done there. He got six games. And he got, he got and, sacked. You know, and everybody notices that, yeah. especially coaches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it becomes a becomes a warning sign, mm -hmm. I think, to them. So he can try and do this, but he's got a little bit of a reputation of having a quick trigger finger yeah. on a coach and maybe some bizarre moves that they make. And, you know, that might be a problem too. So these guys that are coming here or going to try and come here, I mean, they're going to know the landscape here yes. uh, before they get involved here. I mean, you just don't want to come here and get fired quickly. Right. You know, and even the David Blatt situation, you know, turned out to be a bizarre mm -hmm. situation. I mean, even when he was fired, I mean, they were, you know, they didn't have a bad record. No. You know, I no. mean, they were, they, you know, it was just a vibe that they had in the locker room. So, I, you know, it, um, it, it will be interesting to see. I, I, I really think this is an owner's pick, though. Yeah, I do, too. And, and expect the unexpected on this. I mean, remember when... The Cavs and David Griffin, you know, when Gilbert and Griffin couldn't agree and decided to go their separate ways, I mean, Chauncey Billups was the guy that everybody thought was going to get the job, and he, that came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy that, you know, 
obviously a terrific player and had gone into the broadcast booth, but you know, no management experience and it, you know it looked like it came this close to getting the job before Billups finally said no I wonder if you know and it might be Tom Izzo but some, somebody like that expect the unexpected with Dan Gilbert since yeah. I agree with you it's going to be the owner I mean, he'll be the owner's pick yeah I think that they'll bring in a, an array of names to him but I think it's going to be his selection it's his team um, he's very open about that right. um, you know and he will make the pick um, you know when he decided not to redo the deal with David Griffin I think it was more his decision than David's I decision too. so I think Dan Gilbert definitely runs the show over there and he'll run the show especially with a coaching selection and I you know knowing him I think you know he'll throw that line out there uh, to try and land a big fish at first mm -hmm. and then maybe just come to the realization of really the right guy for this particular roster it will finally sink in yeah the right person will, will present themselves one way or the other but um don't look for anything to happen for a few weeks, especially. Yeah, until I don't think until lottery. that lottery is, yeah. is decided where they're going to be. Yeah. Uh, a couple other things before we uh, wrap up. Uh, the Masters are underway. <laughs> Masters underway. Um, I, 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 I don't know about you. I, I, there's, to me, putting the feet up on Sunday and watching the Masters and watching the final round is one of my favorite days in sports. It's, uh, I it's, love it. Yeah, it really is something. I, I, I was up early this morning. And I saw the ceremonial tee off with uh, Gary Player and Jack Nicholas. God, Gary Player is in impeccable shape. Yes. I mean, Gary Player, I don't know how old he is, but he is in impeccable condition. Gary Player really always kept himself physically great fit. Just great shape. Uh, and it was great to see Jack Nicholas. Jack, I mean, is Jack is now 79, and he can still make putts. I yeah. mean, I watched him in the par three. Yeah. He, he still he still lights out with yeah. that putter. Now, you know, um, even during the years that Tiger was dominant and won, he had a very good first round mm -hmm. today. He has usually struggled in the first round. He's made a charge yes. on Fridays and Saturdays. And, of course, even last year made a great run on Sunday and then just couldn't pull it off on the, on the final four or five holes. But he had a very good round today. He shot 70. He had the lead at one point. Yeah. Um, he's a lot closer to the lead today than he has been in other been, years. Yeah. So that, that's, boy, I'll tell you what. CBS is going. Yeah, All yeah. right. You want you want to. This you, is going to be great. You want to hear patrons roar? You get Tiger on that leaderboard on Sunday. You know you get Spieth or McElroy, yeah. Mickelson. You know you get those big names up there. Uh, Fowler. Ke I mean, I, I, you know, I mean those those types of names. Yeah. And um, it, it becomes fun. I I love the Masters. I I mean it, it was like. It was the first year I really watched it was of course '86, and and that was the yeah. you know at that point that was still to me one of the five great sporting days I can ever remember of Jack winning his uh, sixth green jacket. I was a young, very young, um, young weekend sportscaster here. Yes, uh, at Channel Three. You're a baby. Yeah, when that happened, and man, I have to tell you that was really something. Vern Lundquist with those great calls. Yep. Uh, when Jack got on that roll, the yes sir, yes sir, you know, that was a that was a, just a just a great call. CBS does a great job with the Masters. Yes. The thing I love about the Masters is, um, and I have a problem sometimes with the U.S. Open, mm -hmm. especially the U.S. Open, is that they you know the USGA really really tricks up yeah. the U.S. Open courses. courses. Yes, and it becomes futility too mm -hmm. many times. I want to see these guys score yes i want to see them make great shots and i don't know that the courses in the u.s open many times um you know allows them to do that right. even as skilled as they are the thing i like about the masters is and i know they've you know they've tigerized the course mm -hmm. and things like that but the fact of the matter is it is what it is yeah. augusta is what it is it's amen corner it's yep. it's you know 17 and 18 unbelievable 16 that you know that tough hole. par three yep. Uh, you know, I just, that's what I like. I want to see that. Yeah. I want to see them play the course that's there day in and day out yeah. rather than these, you know, ice conditions yeah. that they play on these greens in the U.S. Open. Where, you know, you can shoot five or six under, you know, for a round just as easily as you can shoot maybe a, a two under because the winds might be doing this or something else might right. be doing that. But, yeah. you know, it's not like you're sitting there going, okay, is two over going to be enough to win a tournament? I yeah. mean, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not a, not right. a big fan of not a big fan of that at all. All right. Uh, wrapping things up, Jimmy, uh, I, you know, uh, we've got to make a quick announcement. Uh, today is the last show um, that is going to be 
directed full time anyway by our guy David Herbertson. Oh. He's, Herb is Herb is going to be her oh. pop on over. Get on, pop on over. Now, Dave wow. is not leaving us, but he's he, different hours, different shift. So that means it's we our don't first, get you. Your last show is our first show with a studio audience. <laughs> right. How about that? <laughs> oh, that's unbelievable, yes. man. Yes. But uh, thank you, my thank friend. Thank you, David. Because, yeah. I mean, we Press Club of Cleveland Award last year. We'll hopefully uh, have some more this year. And uh, you're a big part of it, my friend. It's been a great, great run. So Not don't, right. yeah, please. Yeah, uh, over, when, when you are right, yeah, when you are around in the evenings, <laughs> pop on over. We want, we, we, we love having you. I know it'll be the first place that you come. That's right. <laughs> right. Thanks for having me. Thank you, got you my friend. Thank you. thank you. All right, and thank you all for watching. Back with you next week as we get closer and closer. NFL schedule, the draft, Masters. It's a busy April. Don't, yeah, you don't, you won't want to be anywhere else. All right, for Jimmy, for Herb, I'm Dino. Thanks for watching the Donovan Live Post Game Show on WKYC's Facebook Live.